here in this subtitle we'll see uh, Kepler's law satellite motion and weightlessness uh, if we focus on uh, Kepler's laws so the basic uh, laws of planetary motion were established by John Kepler uh, in 1571 uh, and 1630 uh, based on the analysis of astronomical observation by Tycho Brahe in 1546 to 1661. In 90, uh, 1609, Kepler's formulated the first two laws. Third law was discovered in 1619. Later, in the late 7th century, Isaac Newton provided mathematically that all three laws of Kepler's, all three laws, basically, you will see the three laws of Kepler's, are the consequence of the law of universal uh, gravitation. They are the consequence of universal uh, uh, gravitation. Okay, so let's start from the first one, which is Kepler's first law. law of, uh, the other name of uh, Kepler's first law is law of orbits. So it states that the orbit of each planet, consider this is star or star, which is the sun. So these are the planets which rotate um, around the sun. So uh, we consider this orbit, the orbit of each planet, either Earth or planet Mars, Jupiter, whatever. So each planet in a solar system, in a solar system, is an ellipse. As you can see here, it is uh, in elliptical, the rotation is in elliptical form. The sun will be on one focus. We have two focus. Consider this is the first focus in the ellipse, and this is the second focus. So the sun, we can find the sun either in the first one or in the second one so it depends upon uh, upon the view either uh, front view side view and whatever you want so the sun will be on uh, one focus so the point f1 and f2 represent in the figure in this figure are known as the portion of the ellipse so we have f1 and f2 so in one of them you get for example in f1 you get the sun so the rotation of each planet is just an elliptical form. As you can see, we have different planets. Like the first, consider this is the first, the second, and the third, like the Earth. And so based on this, you can see that the rotation of these planets around uh, around this around the uh, star, the solar, uh, the sun, is in elliptical uh, form. Okay. So uh, having this uh, in mind. Now let's see what the law of uh, orbit. So the law of orbit, uh, it states that the orbit of each planet in the solar system is in elliptical form. It's not saying that it is in a circular form. It is in elliptical form. <clears throat> not only for the first planet or the second or the third. It is for all planets of the solar system. Okay, so the second one, which is Kepler's second law, the law of areas. Kepler's second law, the law of area. So if you are asked to state Kepler's second law, you can state that the radius vector connecting the center of the sun. Remember, the radius vector, consider this is the radius vector. It connects the center of the sun. This is the center of the sun and the planet. This is a planet. Consider this is the planet. So the center of the sun and it connected, this radius vector connected with the center of the planet maybe earth so uh, they sweeps out the space out equal areas in equal interval of time equal areas in equal interval of time for example consider this is the first position and this one is the second position so the time from the first position to the second position let's say t1 and the time from the third position of the planet to the third, the number fourth position of the planet is t2 if t1 is equal to t2 so this area will be equal to this area according to kepler's second law which says that the radius vector connecting the center of the sun and the planet sweeps out equal areas this area let's say this is area one and this is area two so this area is equal to this area two if if the time interval the time interval is equal equal interval of time the interval from one position one to the position two is equal to the time interval from position three to the position four. You may have another position like this one. You may have this position, let's say this is one and this is two. 
and let's say this is 3 and this is 4. If the time interval from 1 to 2 is equal to the time interval from 3 to 4, therefore the area which is represented by A is equal to the area which is represented by B. So you can take other position like you can say it is going to take 3 and 4 here, 1 and 2 here, or 1 and 2 here, 3 and 4 here, whatever you want. But if the time interval is the same, the area uh, will be equal to the same is uh, what we have from the uh, Kepler second law or the law of area. The other name of Kepler second law is the law of area. Okay, so the Kepler third law, which the other name is the law of uh, harmony, so states that the square of orbital period, period T, of a planet, by the way, period means the time for one complete oscillation. The time for one complete oscillation is a pair, so well, for uh, planets it's one complete rotation. So the vital period of a planet is proportional to the cube of the average distance between the center of the planet and the sun, like the previous one we considered the Rayleigh vector. So for explanation of this Kepler set law, we have to take these two examples. For example, let's take planet Earth and planet Mars. For planet Earth, the period for one complete oscillation is one year. One year is for complete oscillation. So the Earth takes one year or 3.156 times 3 raised to 7 second to complete one rotation. To complete one rotation, one complete rotation, this much time uh, uh, it, it takes for uh, that rotation but the average distance the average distance uh, from the planet uh, <clears throat> planet is proportional to uh, the average distance from the uh, planet to the earth uh, no from the earth to the sun is 1.4957 times 10 raised to 11 it's in meter now let's take the square of this period the square of the period divided by the cube of the distance will be equal to 2.977 times 10 raised to minus 90. But for Mars, the period is 5.93 times. So which one is greater? The period for Mars is greater than the period for Earth, which is for Mars, which is 5.93 times 10 raised to 7 second. But the average distance for Mars is 2.278 times 10 raised to 11 meter. Therefore, when you take the square over R cubed for Mars, you will get 2.97. So, if you take another planet like Jupiter, whatever, so this number, T square over R cubed, almost they are proportional, approximately three times 10 raised to minus uh, 19 second square over meter cubed, approximately three times 10 raised to minus 19. Uh, second square meter cubed. So this number for even for other planets, they, it is the same. So this number is the same. So based on this, we can state that the square of orbital period, the square of this orbital period of a planet is proportional to the cube of, it's, this one is proportional to the cube of this cube because this result is the same. That's why this square is proportional to the distance between the center of the planet and the sun. The center of the planet. By the way, let's go back to... Yeah, this is the center of the sun and this is the center of the planet. So the center of the... This is, so we have to take the average distance. This, is, this one is larger, this one is smaller. But we need to take the average distance between the center of the sun and the center of the planet. Okay, so if this number is the same, so we can say that T1, T1 square over R1 cubed is equal to T2 square over R2 cubed. So if you know R1 and R2 and T1, therefore it's possible to find T2 for the unknown planet. The period can easily calculate it. Uh, for the unknown planet if you know the radius. If you don't know the radius and if you know the period, so it's also possible uh, to find the uh, radius also for unknown planets by uh, this uh, formula. 
Okay, so this is what we have from Kepler's Erdero, the law of harmony, which is the square of the orbital period of the planet is proportional to the Q of the average distance between the center of the planet and the sun. Okay, that's all about Kepler's law, so I will continue with the other subject.